Let's talk about Super Mario Bros. Wonder. This is the brand new 2D game from Nintendo that's dropping this October, October 20th to be exact. And there's been a little bit of discussion about the game compared to new Super Mario Bros. And also, how can it do compared to something like Super Mario Odyssey or even new Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe when it comes to these sales? So in this video, I'm gonna go over one or more like a couple major things that people are underestimating with this game, Super Super Mario Bros. Wonder, and it's into some other interesting Nintendo Switch news. But before we get into any of that, please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you're someone new, and click that notification bell to get my videos first, and check out our daily live streams, PE Live, right here at 7 p.m. ET. Now let's go ahead and jump right into it when it comes to Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Now, like I stated, people are underestimating this game. I don't think people understand exactly how big 2D Mario is and in this video I'm gonna break down a couple of different things in addition to talking about the game as well what makes me excited about it so according to Nintendo October 20th this game is about 4.5 gigabytes in size so it's not a massive file size type of game 2d platformer obviously the geometry and the graphics aren't gonna be something like you'd see in like let's say a legend of Zelda tears of the kingdom when it comes to that but it still looks very clean and I would say visually different and more artistically expressive compared to new Super Mario Bros. Some of the little details that I'm seeing when it comes to Mario and the little effects that happens just make it more gamey and it's into more expression and more vibrancy within it. It feels more alive, it feels more different, and it feels just better from what I'm seeing. It just looks and it just seems visually so much more different than what we saw with new Super Mario Bros. with the expression of Mario. Really trippy with some of the stuff that's in the game, kind of some weird stuff going on, completely replace the three coins with a whole different type of system and of course now you have more playable characters as well having daisies really nice and maybe there's some secret playable characters maybe rosalina gets in and some other characters as well but this to me is a very good step above what new super mario bros was doing now new super mario bros obviously it was around for a very long time we had it from 2006 all the way up until this point but for the past 10 years for the most part there hasn't been a brand new i would say nintendo made 2D Mario game. It was just New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe. We did have Mario Maker, Mario Maker 2 as well, but of course those are create your own Mario experience and those are using the different types of styles that we've seen before in Mario games. So this is the first actual new style Mario game that we've had in a decade plus, going all the way back to 2006 when it comes to New Super Mario Bros. on the Nintendo DS. So that right there is very exciting in its own right. But I want to talk a little bit more about this game and exactly how it's going to perform on the market because it seems like people don't think that it has the ability to even beat out a game like Super Mario Odyssey when it comes to total sales. But I think people might be a little bit mistaken when it comes to the 2D Mario franchise. Now, we went over this a little bit before in a previous video, but if you missed it, 2D Mario actually outsells 3D Mario throughout time. I mean, that's just something that just happens all the time. 2D Mario is incredibly popular. Now, if you go back to the New Super Mario Bros. series, that was 30 million units sold. If you go back to New Super Mario Bros. on the Wii, that was 30 million sold. And even if you look at the most recent, with New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, that sold over 15 million units as a port and didn't have a big launch or anything like that on the Nintendo Switch and was able to jump its way up into the top 10 in the past four years plus or so. Now, if you look at it, go back to when Nintendo released a 3D Mario game from the Wii U era as well. That was Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. That's actually sold less than New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe. New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe has sold more. So in my opinion, with a brand new, that's not based off of anything previous, 2D Mario game, brand new one, I think it absolutely has the ability to catch up and outsell Super Mario Odyssey, for example, because I do think that Nintendo is going to move on to the next big 3D Mario game in the next year or two. Once we get that new Switch, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a big brand new 3D Mario game, and I don't think it's going to be Odyssey 2. I think it's going to be a brand new theme, something completely different, or taking some old ideas and kind of mixing everything together to create a different type of experience 
experience but i don't think it's just going to be a follow-up to super mario odyssey if they were going to do that they would have already done that now at this point because if you look at the past whenever nintendo has done that super mario 3d lance super mario 3d world pretty close in announcement and release dates also if you look at something like new super mario bros same thing as well and that's just 2d mario but if you're going back to 3d mario as well look at something like super mario galaxy 1 super mario galaxy 2 all within three years of each other so i don't see nintendo waiting all this time than just to say oh well here's super mario odyssey 2 i mean it could happen but i don't think it will i think it's going to be a big big open world different style of mario game that's different from what odyssey does so we're gonna have to wait and see exactly what that turns out to be but when it comes to super mario bros wonder i do think based off the past sales of 2d mario games doing so well and the fact that i personally feel that there's going to be backwards compatibility and this game is going to be one of those drivers that's going to help people over the course of the next four five six years buy the Switch 2. In addition to just selling Switch lights or just selling Switch's residual when it comes to long-term sales, I can absolutely see Super Mario Bros. Wonder doing 30 million units plus on the Nintendo Switch and then later getting more sales on the Nintendo Switch 2. So I think this is going to be a massive seller based off of the games that we've seen before. It's very possible that this game does 26, 27, 28 million and actually passes up Super Mario Odyssey eventually because I do feel once again that this game is going to be on sale for a very long amount of time compared to pretty much Super Mario Odyssey its time is almost up when it comes to the new 3D Mario game don't get me wrong people will still go out there and buy Super Mario Odyssey but I don't think it's going to be able to keep up in sales in the long run with the big next new 3D Mario game coming whereas pretty much new Super Mario Bros U Deluxe it was selling so much based on it being the preferable 2D Mario game Mario Maker and Super Mario Maker 2 those are just too complicated there's too much work to do just to play a level and there's no actual like end result when it comes to you playing other people's level you don't get anything it's just oh i played the level and that's that there's no goal or achievement there's no certain challenges baked in or something like that so to me it just doesn't really lend well for long term when it comes to just the casual play and casual use and that's what 2d mario is about it's about casual play with of course some high level play for those who do want to get into it but for the most part people are playing this with their family and friends kids stuff like that and I think that's why Mario Maker and Mario Maker 2 got kind of smoked by New Super Mario Bros. overall when it comes to sales. Because even if you compare Mario Maker 1, Mario Maker 2, you compare that to New Super Mario Bros., it's nowhere near even close when it comes to the height of each series. So I think that this game, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, can do absolutely better than people are actually giving it credit for. So we'll see how everything turns out when it comes to this game. But I'm expecting a fairly decent launch and then long-term sales overall but i'm excited for it. i think the art style looks really cool i like the expressions of the characters i think the music is fun i like how the different flowers talk in terms of things it feels just more vibrant and in style than maybe what new super mario bros was which felt crusty and kind of from like 2010 or 2006 just that style kind of wore out its welcome over all of these years so i'm very happy that they're kind of moving over to this and i'm very happy with how the game looks and the expressions for mario and the team it just feels like it's just more effort put into it than new super mario bros has after we had gotten so many of the games beforehand now let's move into the next thing here guys because we have a potential big secret game that's coming to nintendo switch now and all of you guys know about the metal gear solid volume one collection right that's going to get you metal gear solid the original game for the ps1 it's going to get you metal gear solid 2 sons of liberty and it's going to get you metal gear solid 3 snake eater awesome stuff right in addition to some of the old school classic metal gear solid games as well but did you know that there seems to be a leak for the next Metal Gear Solid collection? Yeah, and a game, or more like games, that have never appeared on a Nintendo platform seem to be freed from the shackles. And yes, we're gonna talk about this because more Metal Gear seemingly is coming to Nintendo Switch and of course Xbox, PlayStation, PC, and all of that. So, there is a rumor going around. Metal Gear Solid Master Collection Volume 2 should include Metal Gear Solid 4 5 and Peace Walker. So, Metal Gear Solid Master Collection Volume 2 will include Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots, Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes, Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain, and Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, according to a source code in the Metal Gear Portal website and IGN sources as well. Now, you guys are seeing that right there, and pretty much you see the abbreviations 
looks that way. Now, the source code indicates that there should be clickable buttons on the page for Metal Gear, Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake, Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty, Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater, Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots, Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes, Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain, and Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker. But on the page itself, only the first five are clickable, which are all included in the Metal Gear Solid Master Collection Volume 1. While Metal Gear Solid Master Collection Volume 2 has not been officially announced, it's planning it's safe to assume, given the title of Metal Gear Solid Master Collection Volume 1. Now, according to IGN, citing its own sources, the lineup of titles for Metal Gear Solid Master Collection Volume 2 that appear in the source code is accurate, and the second volume is expected to launch on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series, Switch, and PC. Metal Gear Solid Master Collection Volume 1 is developed for the PS5, Xbox Series, Switch, and PC via Steam on October 24th. So this is definitely very good news about this because a lot of these games are locked away on certain platforms and haven't been updated yet. Getting games like Peace Walker, for example, Metal Gear Solid 5, Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes, some of these titles have not left their respective platforms. Metal Gear Solid 4, for example, that game is locked away on the PlayStation 3. So getting that on modern platforms getting that to where it'll be portable play as well is a very good thing so whether you're playing on steam deck pc or you're playing on your nintendo switch this is a good thing and like i stated before these have never came over to nintendo platforms before so to see all these different metal gear games finally get to the nintendo platform is very good to see me personally i like metal gear solid 4 and i think that's a game that i'll probably replay i've only played and beat that game one time and i forgot a lot of it a lot of these other games metal gear solid 1 metal gear solid 2 metal gear solid 3 i've played and beat multiple times or they have sometimes appeared on nintendo platform metal gear solid 3 for example that was on the nintendo 3 yes i did beat it on there and i beat it on the ps2 and i beat it on the ps3 so i've already played and beat a lot of these games over and over again so i'm not going to waste my time again playing but for me metal gear solid 5 and metal gear solid four those are games that i might want to replay and i might want to just play again because metal gear solid 5 i did not like that game maybe i'll give it another shot but metal gear solid 4 i really like and peace walker i definitely want to play that game again because i haven't really played that game many times so this is absolutely good news it's good to see that konami is going in when it comes to these collections and i can't wait to see exactly how metal gear solid 4 is on these newer systems here but let's go ahead and shift gears to another topic here with the playstation 5 and that is final fantasy 16 now i'm about I think six, seven, eight hours in. I'm not exactly sure. I haven't been counting, but I've been playing the game and I've enjoyed it. I think it has really good music. The music is absolutely fantastic. The combat is fun with some faults here and there, but nothing too crazy when it comes to my criticisms with the combat. But I do feel that the combat is fun. It's fast and it's fluid. There's some really cool things. I just would have liked to be able to have maybe your own control of a party to where you can switch characters, but I understand that's not that style of game. They've got Final Fantasy VII Rebirth coming out that does have that style. So I understand it just would have been nice with some of the other characters like Sid for example to be able to play as him or even to be able to play as your dog Torgo I think that would be dope too but moving on from that let's talk about the sales here because there is the UK charts and I need to make sure that I preface this by saying before we get into what Mr. Christopher Drink has to say from GameIndustry.biz I do want to mention that digital sales are a huge part into what goes on today digital sales are a huge part but if you hear when it comes to the physical sales that things are a bit low just understand that so it's almost like a warning here to keep that in mind and it's into some other things that we're going to talk about right now as well so christopher drink says final fantasy 16 is number one this week in the uk but as box launches go it wasn't a particularly strong one physical sales are 74 percent lower than the launch week of final fantasy 15 in 2016 obviously digital is a much bigger component of sales today the data comes later so it's something that i just kind of want to let you guys know about that because we've been talking about how potentially this game is going to perform on the market so you have to look at it this way that obviously the ps5 when it comes to the install base in every single region isn't quite even to where the ps4 was you also have the xbox as well which i'm not saying that contributes like a great deal towards the sales of final fantasy 15 but it's still an install base that's missing from this one here pc was later i made a mistake saying that it's pc as well launch it did it it launched on pc later but still you did have a bigger install base at the time when Final Fantasy 16 launched on the PS4 and Xbox One compared to just the PlayStation 5 right now at this point. You also look at the launches in terms of things. I think it was later in the year. So it was three years or so for the PlayStation 4 compared to the 
almost three years going here with the PlayStation 5. So you're probably gonna see lower sales. Then you also have a little bit of friction between the community when it comes to what people are wanting in a Final Fantasy game and all of that. I'm not sure how that's gonna play a factor if people did it by the game because of that. But what I do know is that on Amazon, for example, here in the US, it actually didn't pass up the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. But once again, PS5 has a massive digital install base of people who like to just buy games digital. So I do think that this game over time will get those residual sales, will actually rack up things as there's price drops and as people kind of clear out other games or maybe just say, okay, I'll finally try out Final Fantasy. I think Black Friday could be a huge boon for it because really all there is when it comes to major exclusives for the PlayStation 5 this holiday is Spider-Man. Now people are still gonna buy that like crazy, but I do think that people are gonna be like, okay, well, let me get spider-man and something else especially if there's a good deal for final fantasy 16 so don't want to sound the alarm bells right now at this point because some people will probably try doing that on twitter and all of that so i think it's okay but we'll see how everything is in japan as well because final fantasy 16 actually did pass up the legend of zelda tears of the kingdom on amazon japan for a bit so we'll see if it goes back down or what's happening there but overall i think final fantasy 16 is going to do great in the long run but we'll see how it ultimately ends up doing so what do you guys think about all the different topics that we discussed here today let me know in the comment section below also make sure you hit that like button subscribe for someone new click that notification bell check out our other videos right here on screen and we'll see you in the next one peace